On a beautiful night for some high school softball, we're coming to you live from Birdville High School for tonight's 6-5A district finale between the visiting Colleyville Heritage Panthers and the Birdville Hawks. Cameron Songer here with you on Vipe Live, and it is a perfect night for uh, uh, just to spend it out at the ballpark. 84 degrees, wind blowing, uh, pretty stiff breeze, about 20 miles an hour from east to west as the Birdville Hawks take the field for the final time in this 2022 season. Cameron Songer here with you on Vipe Live. Shane Shulwinski, my QA, making sure we look and sound good as the crowd filling in. Getting ready to watch their Hawks one last time this evening, taking on the Colleyville Heritage Panthers, a team that's already clinched the district and will move on to the postseason. This will be it for the Hawks tonight. So they want to send their fans home happy and send their seniors off with what would be a meaningful win. Let's quickly introduce you to the starting lineups for both teams, starting with the visitors from Colleyville Heritage High School, about seven miles down the road from here. Danae Vasquez-Dixon leads off and plays center field. Then Leah Perales at short. Luna Flores at second base. Gracie Green, the third baseman, bats fourth, followed by Corinne Morrison in left field and Nia Cisneros behind the plate. Alexis Perales is at first base. Mackenzie Dawson is the designated player. And Leah Somerville is in right field. McKin McKinley Swaim is the starting pitcher for the visitors from Colleyville Heritage High School. For Birdville, they line up defensively like this. In the outfield, Moore, Baca, Taylor... Burris, Headington, Balzada, and Baker is the infield from left to right. Beecraft is behind the plate. And in the circle tonight, number 15, Maddie Ramsey. The JV game was uh, a quick one. The Panthers won that one by a score of 8-1. to one. And the on the varsity side, the Hawks will look to turn that around. And we said, uh, they're, they're playing with house money here. They're just playing for pride. They're loose and they're excited. They have a senior night ceremony coming up after tonight's game. So they want to be celebrating a, a huge win. The Panthers won the earlier meeting between the two teams earlier this week. And you see the infield meeting right now. Bailey Headington, Corinne Burris, Emma Beecraft, Morgan Balzuda, Mackenzie Baker. And of course, uh, in the outfield you have Alex Baca, Sidney Taylor, and Lauren Moore. A few minutes after 7 p.m. We're set to play. First pitch swinging, tipped foul. And we'll start 0-1 to leadoff hitter Danae Vasquez-Dixon. Colleyville Heritage is led by head coach Allison Conaway. They're on a nine-game winning streak, ranked number three in the Dallas Morning News area ranking for Class 5A and others. They're moving up as another swing and a foul ball. Vasquez Dixon quickly behind, 0-2 in the count. Chance for Ramsey to put her away early. The pitch. Tried to get her to chase one in the uh, right-handed batter's box there. She wasn't biting. Ramsey winds and delivers. Again outside. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter in today's game. Saw that stiff breeze. The flags are just straight out. This ball popped up to the left side in foul territory. Moore giving chase. And she can't make the grab. Just a, uh, just so you know, even if we uh, were moving the camera around tonight, we're not. Uh, we wouldn't be able to see that corner. That's just based on the way the uh, the field is configured here with the uh, the PA box and the, I guess what you would call the, the press box there, just to the uh, right of the Birdville dugout. Blocking 
our view there of the uh, the left field foul territory. This one swung on, fouled back into the net again, and we'll do two and two again. Sixth pitch of the at-bat coming up for Vasquez Dixon. He's doing a nice job of making Ramsey work here in the uh, first encounter of tonight's game. Two two offering on the way from Ramsey. Swung on, laced back up the middle, threw into center field, and it's a leadoff single for Delay Vasquez Dixon. So that's uh that's going according to script. If you're the Panthers visiting from Colleyville Heritage High School. A long at bat for the leadoff hitter, battling back on a two-strike count, then getting the leadoff hitter aboard. Leah Perales will try to move her up now. Runner going. This one swung on and fouled off to the right side. Out of play. Just sort of corkscrewed it over into the Panther dugout. No balls. One strike to Perales, the shortstop. Junior listed as a middle infielder on the Panther roster, so she'll play shortstop here tonight, but can also play some second base if they need to move personnel around. Vasquez Dixon stands on first. Here's the 0-1 offering from Ramsey. Bunt squared up, and diving catch made by Baker. Throw goes back to first, double play. So two quick outs on the 3-4 double play, a failed bunt attempt by Perales. Tremendous diving effort from Mackenzie Baker, getting some dirt on her white uniform early. And that empties the bases for the second baseman, Luna Flores. First pitch takes, and that's a called strike. Oh, one on the way. S chased one up high and fouls it straight back. Almost had a nice catch by one of the uh, Panther parents. It is senior night. I think unofficially it's also bring your dog to the ballpark night. Seen uh, three or four pooches in the crowd. and That's always a delight. One of them barked at that foul ball, though. Not okay. Not okay to have something come into the uh, into the bleachers like that. That one misses. One ball, two strikes, two Flores. Ramsey gets her sign and delivers. A little high and tight. It's two and two. Base is empty, two away. And the pitch from Maddie Ramsey. Swung on, fouled off. Off the light tower. And that one ricocheting around. Good hands in the uh, in the bleachers to keep that from becoming a problem. And again, we're at two and two. Another long at bat for these early Panther hitters. Of course, some of that problem uh, mitigated by the fact that Perales bunted into a double play. This one swung on, popped up. It's playable at first base. Baker can't haul it in. As she tried to fight off the late evening sun here in North Richland Hills. Bloop single for Flores as she stands on first. So one spectacular play from Baker earlier this inning, diving to catch the popped up bunt and then doubling up the runner. Couldn't pick that fly ball up, so the inning continues with a runner on first. Check swing and fouled off by Gracie Green, the third baseman. 
getting her first swings here this evening. Green, a sophomore who will also play some first base, although playing third base here for the Panthers tonight. The 0 1, low and inside, scooped up by Beecraft. Did a nice job to knock it down, keep that from getting to the backstop. So important here for Birdville to just try to keep. Uh, Keep Colleyville Heritage out of the scoring column in the top of the first. A very dangerous top of their order. So that pitch misses. Two and one. Your, your head immediately goes to worst case scenario when the leadoff hitter gets on, as Danae Vasquez Dixon did. But they had her going on the bunt attempt by Perales. This one swung on, pulled to the left side in foul territory, and it is a foul ball. You saw Lauren Moore given another hard effort. I think she might have gone crashing into the uh, the fence there along the foul, uh, foul territory. Over behind the Birdville dugout, there's the, the batting cages. Saw both teams in there during the JV game getting loose, getting warmed up. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Took something off it, called strike three, and that will end the inning. Backwards K on Gracie Green, and that retires the side. In that inning for the Panthers, no runs on a couple hits, one left on. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning here on Vipe Live. All right, let's introduce you to the defense for the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. In the outfield, Morrison, Vasquez, Dixon, and Somerville, left, center, and right. Green at third, Morales at short, Flores at second. Perales at first, Cisneros behind the plate, and the starting pitcher for the Colleyville Heritage Panthers is the freshman, number 16, McKinley Swaim. One more time, the starting batting order for Coach John Love's Birdville Hawks. Bailey Headington, Alex Baca, Corinne Burris, Maddie Ramsey, Emma Beecraft, Morgan Bazaldua, Sydney Taylor, Mackenzie Baker, and Kaylee Anzalone. First pitch high to Bailey Headington. Headington will look to get the line started for the Hawks in the bottom of the first inning. Second pitch from Swaim is turned and hit down the third base line. It's a fair ball. Big turn around first. And standing on second base with a leadoff double is Bailey Headington. That's a way to get the party started for the Birdville Hawks in their half of the first. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Uh, senior Alex Baca steps to the plate. See how the Hawks approach this. First time we've seen a runner in scoring position in tonight's game. 
see how aggressive they'll be on the base pass with two, three, and four due up. Bunt attempted, pulled back, and called ball one on Baca. Challenge early for the freshman pitcher, Bailey Swaim, to try to work her way out of this. Or Kinley Swaim, excuse me. One ball, one strike to Alex Baca. Bailey Headington on first base or on second base. But pops straight back. And it's out of play. Not sure how well the camera caught that, but that was headed right at my dome. Had to duck out of the way at the last second. If I was about a foot taller, that might have been a problem. One ball, two strikes, and Baca will be swinging away here. Not at that, as it's in the dirt, and uh, to the backstop it goes. Headington will take third on the wild pitch. Two balls, two strikes now to Baca. And the go-ahead run just 60 feet away. It was still a lot of softball to be played tonight, but this is really the start the Hawks were hoping for. You keep the Panthers off the board in the top of the first, get a runner into scoring position with no outs. Now can you cash it in? Baca fights another one off, still two and two. On the senior center fielder for Birdville. Swaim comes set, here's the 2-2 again. Swung on, pops straight back, and caught. No, it hit the net. They say it hit the net so the batter's still alive. That's a very close call, as that just skimmed the net. But the, again, the argument is that if that net isn't there, the catcher would say, well, I could have caught that. The counter argument is that the field ends. There's a brick wall right there. Some chatter coming from the Panther dugout. <laughs> They're not happy. They want to get as many outs as quickly as they can. Baca gets a uh, charge into this one, pops it into left field, it's caught by Morrison, tagging up from third and scoring is Headington. And it's an RBI sack fly for Alex Baca. And the Birdville Hawks have a one nothing lead. Britton Burris due up next for the Hawks, but we're talking something over here. Might see a change made. Seems awfully early to be going to the bench for anything other than an injury, and I don't see anyone shaking up. We'll see what this is about. Doesn't seem like Coach Allison Conaway is too worked up. He's had a playfully little slap at the back of her counterpart. So don't think it's anything too important. Maybe they're just going over the uh, 
the ground rules again? I'm not 100% sure what that was for. Either way, there's one out. Bases are empty. One run already in, and Corinne Burris at the plate for Birdville. Time called. Wish I could tell you what that was, what all that was for. I think maybe they're che if they were checking to see if the runner went early, they would have needed to throw over there, which they didn't do. And now the pitch is taken for ball one. That's that's a moot point. You can't do that anymore. So that run definitely counts. It's on the board. No taking it off the board. This one swung on, lifted by Burris into shallow left field. Camping out under it is Morrison. She makes the catch. And there's two away. So the pitcher, Maddie Ramsey, steps in. She's in the cleanup spot. Something you're not going to see it at the perhaps a higher level is, you know, a, a pitcher who also bats cleanup, but 5A Texas softball, it's, it's not that uncommon. Ramsey first pitch swinging, gives it a ride, but it's well foul. She was behind, and now she's behind in the count. No balls, one strike to Ramsey. Well, out in front of that one. Nice job by Swain to take something off that, and there's two strikes. You can see by the way Ramsey swung at that first one, she's got some pop in that bat. Now needs to shorten up, protect the plate with two strikes, and she fouls this off into the net. This is empty, two outs. One run already in for the Hawks. And that one high and outside. A ball all the way. Emma Beecraft, the catcher, stands on deck. Already has the shin guards on. So if Ramsey reaches in front of her, she'll take a moment to come up. That one just a bit high. Ramsey very close to pulling the trigger on that one. Two balls, two strikes, pitcher versus pitcher. That's another close call, but it was inside. Count goes full to Maddie Ramsey. Base is empty, two outs in the bottom of the first. Ramsey stays alive with a good foul ball. <laughs> Payoff pitch again, swung on, cue shot, and it's foul towards the visiting dugout. Already this inning, Headington led off with a double, reached third on a wild pitch, and was brought home by the Baca RBI sack fly out in left field. Corinne Burris was also flew out to left field. And then the cleanup hitter, Maddie Ramsey, finally draws the full count walk. Number five hitter is the catcher, number one. A B craft. Courtesy runner stands on first base now. It's number four, Lindsay Edwards.
So with two outs, the Hawks making the change to get a, a little bit more speed on the base paths. And you know they might not get a ton of base runners against the, the Panthers tonight. First pitch up high, goes to the backstop. The umpire over there at second base had his hands up. And he's going to return the runner over to first. I'm not sure if she went early. That one outside. I think, I think with one and one here, you wonder if Beecraft's going to sit on something. Swings at the pitch up high, can't catch up to it, and it's one and two. One ball, one strike. So that first pitch that went to the backstop, they, they waved it off. It was uh, a dead ball. Swung on, fouled straight back. Now it's one and two. Swain's next pitch, high and outside. Wonder if that might have been a sort of a modified pitch out. See if they can try to catch Lindsey Edwards stealing to end this inning. Two balls, two strikes to Emma Beecraft. Swings and lifts this one to center field. Over the head of the center fielder. That goes all the way to the wall. Rounding third and heading home is Edwards. Beecraft stumbled on her way around first. She has to hold up at first base. It's an RBI single for Emma Beecraft. It's 2-0 Hawks, and Beecraft head in hands because she was thinking about extra bases, just lost her footing. She might be a little shaken up. I have a pinch runner for the Hawks again. Valeria Bridges takes over running for the catcher. Morgan Basildua. The sixth Hawk to come up to the plate this inning. Early crooked number for the host on senior nights. First pitch swinging, fouled off into the Hawk dugout. Working Basil Dua, the second baseman. Number 13 in white. Swings and fouls this one straight back. And she's quickly in an 0-2 hole. Valeria Bridges over on first. Two runs already in this inning. RBI sack fly from Alex Baca. RBI single from Emma Beecraft. Off-speed pitch swung on and missed. So the top of the first and the bottom of the first both end with strikeouts, but very different results for the two teams as the Hawks put up two runs on a couple hits. They leave one on. We'll go to the top of the second inning. Birdville, two. Colleyville Heritage, nothing.
Five, six, and seven do up this inning for the visitors from Colleyville Heritage High School. Karen Morrison will try to get something going for the Panthers. They had a leadoff single get erased by a double play last inning. She swings at the first pitch, fouls it off to the right side, and out of play. Not playable for Baker over at first, as that was right up in the visitor dugout. It'll be Morrison, Cisneros, and Perales due up for CHHS. Pitcher Maddie Ramsey helped her own cause. Drew a walk that kept last inning alive as this one laced back towards second base, played by Balzada, and the throw to first is in time. 4-3 on the putout, and there's one away. Catcher number 23, Nia Cisneros. We'll dig in for her first plate appearance. One away in the top half of the second. First pitch misses. When these two teams played earlier in the week, it was a win for the Panthers. They're ninth in a row. They're 24-3 and three this year. This ball popped up, shallow left field, and under it to make the catch is Moore. Two quick outs. And the bases remain empty. So Birdville, their season's going to end after tonight's game. They're not going to make the playoffs. Meanwhile, the win for Colleyville Heritage was their ninth in a row, like you said, and uh, clinched in the district, according to their uh, their Twitter feed. So in a lot of ways, nothing for them to really play for tonight, other than just to keep that momentum alive. You know, you look at the, the matchup on paper, they think they should win this game. First pitch strike poured in there by Ramsey to Alexis Perales. Games are not played on paper, and senior night could be something special here for the Hawks. 0-1 pitches in the dirt, evens up the count at 1-1. One and one. Two flags in straightaway center field, the American flag, and just below it, the 2016 softball state champion flag for Birdville. This ball swung on, lifted to the right side, but well out of play onto the roof of the dugout, I believe. For strike two. But those flags out there in straightaway center, they have been almost flat, pointing directly out to left field. So any of these pop-ups, uh, it's a little bit of extra work, especially for an outfielder. This ball slapped through the five hole of the first baseman. That's going to get through to right field for uh, what I'll score as a E3. Uh, as that went right through the wickets there on Baker. So it brings up the designated player, number 34, Mackenzie Dawson. Eighth hitter in the lineup getting her first swings of the ball game. Chases one up high for strike one. Right fielder Leah Somerville is on deck if the Panthers can keep this inning alive. Swings at that one and misses. Uh, the poise there for Maddie Ramsey. Inning could have been over. Defense not doing her favors there. But she just comes back and throws two good pitches to get ahead in this count. 0-2 oh, offering. Upstairs, runner going. The throw down to second is up high. And it's a stolen base. But no more damage as the throw does not go into center field. Good awareness there by Basil Dua. Backing up that throw. So it's a stolen base for Perales. She's in the scoring position. The count is one and two with two outs. 
Panthers looking to get one back after conceding two runs in the bottom half of the first. Here's the one-two pitch. Upstairs, right at eye level. So to 2-2 two -two it goes. Rams come set, deliver, swung on and missed strike three. Every half inning so far, we're three for three on these, has ended with a strikeout. And the two out error does not hurt the Hawks. Panthers leave a runner on second. We're halfway through the second inning. It's two nothing Birdville. It'll be Taylor, Baker, and Anzalone. Seven, eight, nine to up this inning for Birdville. They sent six hitters to the plate in that first inning, putting up two runs. Can they keep it going? Definite underdogs in tonight's game. Taylor looks at a first pitch. Brushed her off the plate a little bit. It's high and tight for ball one. Taylor playing right field. Has not had to be very involved defensively. Swings and fouls, this one's straight back and out of play. I think the only time she's had to be involved thus far was backing up on a uh, an error by the first baseman in that last half inning. Swain's next pitch rolled down the third base line, but foul. If that had been fair, that might have been a problem for the Panthers. But Taylor just way out in front of that off-speed offering. Pitch way upstairs to even the count of two and two. Swaim's next pitch, swung on, pops straight back. And the catcher has this going, crashing into the net. This time it's before the ball touches the net. And that's an out. A pop out for the first out of the inning. After Taylor had battled pretty well to get to 2-2. Two -two. It's the eighth hitter, Mackenzie Baker, playing first base tonight. Camera rocking again because of the wind and a few folks late arriving to the uh, to the festivities tonight. Doing our best with this wind, I'll tell you what. First pitch, able to lay off, it's called ball one. Two nothing the lead for Birdville. They've held the Team that's about to win the district championship, scoreless through two. Sort of a half-hearted swing there. In the zone for strike one.
Up high for ball two. Freshman McKinley Swain delivering on a 2-1 pitch. It's fouled off. Good swing as that goes lasering into the net and ricocheting back into the field of play. Foul ball. Two balls, two strikes. One away. Base is empty for Mackenzie Baker. Two, two. Swung on and missed. Strike three swinging. Second strikeout of the night for Swaim in the circle. And they are quickly two outs. The ninth hitter for the Hawks tonight, designated player number nine, Kaylee Anzalone. She'll step in with the bases empty. Looks at a first pitch strike on the inner half. So through two innings, the Panthers sent eight hitters to the plate. This is the ninth hitter the Hawks bringing up. Difference, of course, uh, th that two in the, s in the run column. It's, it's a pretty big deal. Swain's pitch, high and outside, even the count at one and one. Sun setting, the floodlights taking over here at Birdville High School. Temperature still about 80 degrees. Low humidity, it is just, it just feels like a nice day. Swaim's 2-1 offering is swung on, lifted towards the right side in foul territory. It is caught. Peral is able to reel it in, and that ends the inning. So it's a 1-2-3 outing in the second for the Hawks, but they will take that 2-0 lead into the third inning when we come back. Cameron Songer back with you here on Vipe Live. Big thanks to Shane Shulwinski, my QA back at Mission Control. Top of the third inning for Colleyville Heritage. And we'll start with Leah Somerville, the number nine hitter. Looks at a first pitch just a little bit low and outside for ball one. Maddie Ramsey trying to protect that two-run lead her team earned. She had a part in earning in that first inning. And it was a scoreless second inning for both teams. High and tight. Look out. Ducking out of the way is Somerville. She'll take a 2-0 lead in this count. Chance for the Panthers to get the leadoff hitter on board and then start back up with the top of the order. 
Ramsey's next pitch, missing outside, 3-0. and You wonder if this is a take all the way for your number nine hitter. Somerville playing right field tonight for the Panthers. She is a freshman, also capable of pitching. 3-0, swung on, fouled off. Given the number nine hitter a green light to swing on 3-0, which she, she is uh, starting off an inning. A little surprising, but that was going to be a strike either way, so not a bad hack. That one brushed her back. That did not hit her, I don't think, but it's a, a free pass either way. A leadoff walk for Somerville. Lead off hitter aboard, back to the top of the order we go for the Panthers, Danae Vasquez-Dixon. She singled her first time up and was doubled off after a, a failed bunt attempt by uh, Leah Perales, who waits on deck. Let's see if Maddie Ramsey can bear down and make this a productive inning for the Hawks. Throw goes down a second. First pitch was high for ball one. Runner, of course, not going. Danae Vasquez Dixon, left handed batter against the right handed pitcher, Maddie Ramsey. This pitch up high again, 2 0, oh, and Ramsey having some trouble finding the zone here in inning number three. Her battery mate, Emma Beecraft, will come out to have a quick word. I was going to say nothing that rises to the level of having the coach come out, but then the coach comes out. That's not even a broadcaster jinx. I was just thinking it. It's usually a broadcaster jinx when you say it out loud. I have to just watch what I'm thinking now. This is an important situation, though. Don't let the uh, the early nature of the uh, the moment in this game fool you. It's it's only the third inning; still a long way to go. But you know, this is a, a Colleyville Heritage team that is again they're the district champions. They're on a nine-game winning streak. They're capable of putting up runs in a hurry and. Just cannot let momentum get on their side here. No outs, a runner on first. And it's the top of the order up. 2-0 count to Danae Vasquez-Dixon as she gets ready to step back in. Ramsey comes set and fires. Swung on, laced back up the middle. It's a single into center field. Puts runners on first and second as Danae Vasquez-Dixon is now two for two in the ball game. Moving up to second is Somerville. And the go-ahead run comes to the plate in the form of shortstop Leah Perales. Her first time up, she tried to bunt. It was popped up to first caught by Baker and then doubled off over at first. So hitting into a double play her first time up. See if she can either lay one down successfully this time or if she tries to swing away. Squares to bunt. Pulls it back. It's ball one. The 1-0. Squares to Bunt, gets it down. It's a good one. Only play is to first. And she's safe. Throw was not in time. And the bases are loaded now as the heart of the Colleyville Heritage lineup comes up. That was a bang-bang play over there at first, but maybe just a little bit too casual in the infield by the Hawks. Good speed up the base paths by Perales. Luna Flores steps up. Infield comes in as the Hawks will try to cut off this run at home plate. No.
no outs, and this is biggest jam the Hawks have faced. Biggest jam either team has faced, really. Serious danger potential. Ramsey's first pitch, high and outside. Nowhere to put Flores. Perales at first, Vasquez Dixon is at second, Somerville at third. Ramsey's 1-0 offering. Runs just a little bit inside. That's close, and it's 2-0 to the number three hitter. No outs, and the bases are loaded. Wind picking up again. A ball that's hit in the air could cause some problems defensively. That one swerves back over the plate, similar spot. But painting the inside corner there is Maddie Ramsey to get strike one. Two balls, one strike. No outs. Panthers down by a pair. But that tying run is on second. Go ahead run is on first with none out. 2 1 pitch. Swung on, hit towards short. The play is to home, and the force out is at home. Oh, the throw goes to first. They tried to double up the runner, didn't get her. One run scores on the play. They got one out. And Perales, the heads up base running, she's over to third. It's a single, it's a single by Flores. Vasquez Dixon came around to score from second. Perales goes from first to third, and Somerville is out at home. But the Panthers are on the board, and just one out on that play. Throw goes down to second, it's cut off, goes back home with it, not in time, and the Panthers have tied the game. The old first and third play. It's a stolen base for Flores. Coming home to score is Perales. Just like that, we're tied at two. Still one out. First pitch was called a ball to Gracie Green. And she's got the go-ahead run in scoring position. But that previous play, just to recap, it was a ground ball hit to short by Flores. The throw was to home to get the lead runner. Catcher then threw over to first to try to get the batter, but she was safe. Allowed, oh, this ball popped up. In left field, catch made by Moore. No opportunity for Flores to advance. That's a big second out. So two out, two in, and a runner on second. Karen Morrison steps to the plate. She led off last inning, grounded out. First pitch from Ramsey is swung on, lifted towards center field, hangs up there just a little bit too long. Baca's right there. Good charge into that ball by Morrison. And she is retired to end the third inning. But. Two runs on a couple hits, one left on. And we're midway through the third inning. We're tied up at two. You're watching Vipe Live softball action.
Back to the top of the order for the bottom of the third. Two runs in the top half of this inning by Colleyville Heritage has tied this game. So it's a, a brand new start as Birdville starts things off with Bailey Heddington. She looks at a breaking ball in there for a strike one. Nice job by freshman pitcher McKinley Swaim to drop that one back into the strike zone. The 0-1 swung on, lifted to the left side, hooking into foul territory. Might still be playable, and it is. Squeezing it is Morrison, and there's one away. So that one-two punch of Headington Baca pushed across the first run for Birdville in that first inning. It was a leadoff double by Headington, and then a uh, who was able to advance to third on a wild pitch, and then an RBI sack fly by Baca. A lot of these pitches that the uh, Hawks have been connecting with, they've just been skying into left field. Give credit to Corinne Morrison over there in left field, who's just been uh, stout defensively. One out, base is empty, and Baca looks at a first pitch high and outside for ball one. Like we said, Baca had that RBI sack fly her first time up. The senior playing center field tonight on senior night, last game of the season for Birdville. And she pops this one up to the left side again. This time it's the shortstop in shallow left field, and she makes the catch for the second out. Two quick outs for Birdville in their half of the third. Here in District 6-5A, some of the best 5A softball teams in the uh, DFW area, at least according to the Dallas Morning News. Northwest and Richland, also top area teams, but Colleyville Heritage has pulled ahead of them in the standings and also the area rankings, according to the Dallas Morning News. Panthers ranks number three, thanks to their nine game winning streak. Uh, but it's in trouble here tonight. They are not cruising. Needed those two in the top of the third to pull even. As the 1 0 pitch from Swaim is in there for a called strike on Corinne Burris. Burris 0 for 1 today, flew out her first time up. That was in the first inning. Upstairs on that 1-1 offering. Two balls and a strike. Two outs, bases empty to Corinne Burris. With a pitcher, Maddie Ramsey, waiting on deck. Line towards third. Off the glove of the third baseman. The throw to first is still in time, my goodness. Great play by Perales over there at short. And uh, you're gonna wanna check on the hand there of your third baseman, my goodness. What a play, three up, three down. Gracie Green uh, just had that one, almost knock her glove off. We're through three complete, they'll check on Gracie Green. We'll go to the top of the fourth when we come back. It's a good one, two, two here on Vipe Live.
Back here at Birdville High School, District 6-5A, regular season finale for the Birdville Hawks. Top of the fourth inning for the visiting Panthers from Colleyville Heritage. And they'll send six, seven, and eight to the plate. Cisneros, Perales, and Dawson do up to face pitcher Matty Ramsey. 2-2 two, two is our score. This one charged deep off the light stand in foul territory. If she straightens that out, that's a home run. A Roy Dobbs moment, but it's a loud strike one on Nia Cisneros. Wow. That is a fired up Panther dugout there on that foul ball by their teammate. No balls and a strike. Got a new soft ball in and Ramsey tries to settle in. Her one pitch is low. Swing on, popped up and foul. Out of play. A ball and two strikes to the catcher, Nia Cisneros, flew out her first time up. Off-speed pitch, swung on and missed. First strike, three. Third strikeout of the night for Maddie Ramsey. And it brings up the number seven hitter, Alexis Perales. She reached on an error her first time up. That was in the second inning. Ramsey comes set, and the first pitch misses outside. Ball one. Pitch, chasing one outside, it's fouled off on the roof of the visitor dugout and out of play. One one offering, swung on and fouled off. I don't know, do we have another ball we can use? Let's go. Too many foul balls that we need to restock there behind home plate. One away. Bases are empty here as we are in the top of the fourth inning. It's a 1-2 count to Alexis Perales. Ramsey's pitch rolled to second. The throw to first in time, and there's two away. All right, ladies, one more. As Aldwa to Baker, easy as could be. And that gives way to the number eight hitter, Mackenzie Dawson. The designated player struck out to end the second inning. And you got to imagine, Maddie Ramsey will be looking to repeat that performance here. First pitch to her on the outside corner, strike one. Ramsey gets her sign. Comes set, and here's the 0-1 pitch. Just a bit outside there. As you saw Dawson sort of squared to bunt. That might be more of a timing thing as she had pulled it back. Giving some sort of half practice swings. 
as she digs back in. Base is empty with two outs. Squared to bunt. And she swings and fouls it off to the left side. Close to a full house tonight here at Birdville Softball Stadium. Can't blame them on a gorgeous night like this. What, a, what better way could you spend a Friday night than at the ballpark? Especially on senior night. One, two pitch on the way, swung on, fouled straight back. Some, some ribbing here for one of the fans in the rows in front of us. I'll tell you what, if you don't flinch when you see the ball coming right at you, I don't care if you, you, you could know that there's a net in front of you. I'm still going to flinch every time. One, two pitch on the way again. Swung on, grounded foul into the home dugout. Leah Somerville waits on deck for the Panthers if they can get to the number nine hitter. Or she led off last inning. One that resulted in two runs. Off-speed pitch, just barely got a piece. Good cut by Dawson to stay alive. One, two, pitch. High and tight. You can see Dawson battling back in this count. She got to 2-2 two, two her first time up before striking out swinging. Let's see if Ramsey can find one more strikeout pitch here. This ball tattooed up the middle, and it's a two-out single for Dawson. Diving effort by... Headington, she couldn't haul it in from short. So at the very worst here for Colleyville Heritage, assuming that this runner doesn't get caught stealing. If this is an at-bat for Somerville, they'll at the very worst have their uh, the top of their order to start next inning. Somerville walked her first time up. That led off last inning. She made her way to third before she was forced out at home. But two runs did score last inning for the Panthers. Tying the game at two. Squares to bunt. Pulls it back. Strike one called. Designated player Mackenzie Dawson stands on first. And it's the freshman Leah Somerville at the plate. Round ball hit to third. The play is to first, and that will end the inning. 5-3 on the putout, and a two-out single doesn't hurt the Hawks as for the fourth inning in a row, the Panthers leave exactly one runner on base. We're through three and a half at Birdville. The score, 2-2 two -two here on Vibe Live.
bottom of the fourth inning for the Birdville Hawks. It'll be the heart of the order, four, five, and six, due up for Birdville. Cameron Songer here with you on Vipe Live. Birdville Hawks softball as they wrap up District 6-5A play against the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Panthers come in riding that nine game winning streak. They've clinched the district. This will be it for the Hawks. So, can they come through on senior night and s really send their seniors off with something to remember? We're delayed here as the catcher, I think, needs to grab a new mitt. Nia Cisneros has disappeared into the dugout. Where did she go? Yeah, Ramsey, Beecraft, and Basil Dua do up this inning for the Hawks. It looks like they sent uh, one of the Heritage coaches back over to the uh, to the corner there. I wasn't, wasn't sure if they were going to check that a gate was locked or something. But we do have a new catcher's mitt. Perhaps she forgot her glasses. But we're all squared away and ready to go either way. First pitch, low in, inside, ball one. Maddie Ramsey walked her first time up and came around to score. Helping her own cause, let's see if she can do it again. She'll start ahead in this count, two and O. Oh. After back-to-back -back balls issued by McKinley Swaim. Swung on, pokes towards short, and speared by Perales, one away. Just jammed a little bit. As Ramsey comes back to the dugout, sort of shaking her wrist out a little bit. Emma Beecraft to the plate. The catcher had that RBI single in the first, her first time up. Since then, it's been a, a bit of a struggle for the Hawks. Matter of fact, she was the last base runner they had. Lifts this one to shallow left field. She's down. And it's misplayed in left. She's in with a two-bagger. It's a single plus an error on the left fielder who took a weird hop on her. She ended up trying to barehand it. Bounced off her bare hand and got past her just a little bit. And she'll be replaced on the base pass by Valeria Bridges. So the go-ahead run on second base for the Hawks with Morgan Basildua at the plate. Struck out her first time up. One away, runner on second. 2-2 two -two ball game in the bottom of the fourth. With this, the second baseman, Basil Dua, at the plate. Swings, lifts this one over the first baseman's head. It's a fair ball. Yeah. Rounding third, coming home is Bridges. The throw is not, not in time, and then into second. It's an RBI hit for Basil Dua. And the Hawks are in front again. I was gonna say, I thought that throw was in time, but I think the catcher might have bobbled it. Birdville will take it either way. Basil Dua 
with the single and then uh, takes second on the throw. Catcher did a pretty good job of blocking home plate, which uh, might have also been part of the reason why uh, there was some ire from the umpire and was willing to call the runner safe. Hustle, though, by Bridges. Scoring from second. This one grounded to second. Throw to first is in time. Basil Dua advances to third on the ground out by Sidney Taylor. And with two outs... Mackenzie Baker steps in and a chance to add a second run this inning. Could be huge as we get ready for what could be a home stretch of this game. Victoria Cano will come on and hit. So she's hitting for the first base of Mackenzie Baker. How about this is a moment to come on cold off the bench. Insurance run. On third base, two outs in the bottom of the fourth. First pitch gets away from the catcher, coming home, yeah. and she's safe. Basil Dua scoring on the wild pitch, and it's 4-2 Hawks. That's huge for Birdville. As Cisneros just couldn't stick a fork in that pitch, it missed inside for ball one. Big smile on the face of the batter, Victoria Cano, because there's a lot less pressure on her right now. I mean, of course she wants to get a hit, keep the inning alive, but the stakes are much lower right now. Chases one up high, and that's strike one. So for the second time tonight, Birdville has a two-run advantage. It was 2 nothing after 1. It was still 2 nothing after 2. As Cano lines one into left field. Keeps the inning alive with a two-out single. Now she's probably a little bummed because she just got robbed of an RBI by that wild pitch. And uh, the sigh of relief is now coming from the catcher who's saying, well, you know, that whether that's what you're calling that a, a wild pitch or a passed ball, it's not my fault anymore. The hitter was going to get a hit anyway. That run was going to score from third anyway. The hypotheticals, uh, you could play that what if game all day long. Number nine hitter Kaylee Anzalone digs in. Takes the first pitch high for ball one. Swung on, lifted towards right center field. That's going to get down and go to the wall. Trying to score from first is Cano. She has the green light. The throw is going to beat her, but she gets around the tag. No. So the double by Anzalone ends the inning as Cano is out at home. Two runs do score on four hits this inning by the Hawks. One left on, no errors by the Panthers. Four innings in the books, four to two is our score. And if the rest of this game is anything like what we've seen so far, you're not gonna wanna go anywhere. We'll be right back on Fife Live.
Top of the fifth inning at Birdville. Cameron Songer here with you on Vipe Live. Shane Shulwinski, my QA. First pitch swinging, fouled off, and that might be playable. No. That's a blind corner for us over there in left field. Two runs on four hits, one left on for Birdville last half inning. Almost got one more, but that play at the plate ended with the tag out. Meanwhile, for Colleyville Heritage, they're back to the top of the order, ready to do a third trip through the batting order. Danae Vasquez-Dixon is at the plate. She's two for two with a pair of singles, came around to score in that two-run third inning. Swung on, lifted it to left field again. And left fielder got turned around. Moore has to just pick it up off the warning track. And it's a leadoff double for Vasquez Dixon. Tough break that time for the flex slash left fielder Lauren Moore. Just couldn't quite get the read on that. Leadoff double and the Panthers again in business. So Leah Perales steps to the plate. One for two in this game. Hit into a double play in the first, singled and came around to score in the third. Well, last time the Hawks took a two-run lead, it took the Panthers a little while to respond. That doesn't seem to be the case now. They're poised to get those runs right back as Perales squares to bunt, pulls it back, and takes it for a called strike one. Flores waits on deck, Gracie Green in the hole. This is the top of the order for Colleyville Heritage. District champs for a reason. Squared to bunt, did not offer at it, so it's a ball. One one pitch on the way from Ramsey. Bunt laid down right to the pitcher. Gonna be a close play at first. Throw is in time to advance the runner to third. So it's a sack bunt by Leah Perales, and there's one away. The uh, Panther fans who are sitting along the first base line disagree with the call. And no. you know, they might have a case because a lot of them are closer to first base than the, uh, the umpire who's over there has to kind of monitor both the runner who was on second and the play over at first. But he also had a, a straight view of it. So his word is law, and it's an out on the base pass. One away. Luna Flores takes called strike one. Flores has reached base both times, once on a hit, once on a fielder's choice. So she's one for two tonight. Second baseman who hits third in the Panther batting order gives this one a ride down the first base line. That is a foul ball. Just inches foul. Flores, just a freshman, one of uh, a number of freshman contributors for this Panther team. And tell you what, if you're in District 6-5A, you're looking at this and saying, wow, they, you know, going to win the district and have all these freshman contributors. Ground ball hit to third, throw to first. In time, what a pick by Baker over at first. What a play. Burris with the throw. And now we're going to hear from the Colleyville coach, Allison Conaway, who's believing that enough of uh, these calls have gone against her team. 50-50 calls. Umpire's talking this over. 
and they're going to reverse that call. So Luna Flores is safe on first. There's just one out. And now Birdfield coach John Love wants an explanation. I think the argument right now is whether the first baseman Baker picked that ball cleanly or whether she trapped it on the throw to first. Now if she did trap it, it you know, it's not the same as, as catching it cleanly. But if, if that was the case, she sold it really well. <laughs> really just a, did it in one fluid motion to scoop it up. Either way, the inning's going to continue. The question is just whether there's a runner, runners at the corners and one out, or a runner on third and two outs. Gracie Green steps in. She's 0 for 2 tonight. Does not need to do much. Hit to the outfield. Will going first and third there. I'm not sure the pitcher was expecting to throw back as Flores takes second. Hawks are going to let her have it because. Last time, they got burned on that first and third play. You can give up the base. You can get an out, but you can't both give up the base and give up the run, which is what happened last time the Panthers had that situation. So double plays off. Infield comes in. Second pitch is also outside to Gracie Green. 2-0 is the count. First base is open. Check that. One and one the count. So that first pitch was called a strike. The pitch from Ramsey. Below the knees. Ball two. Scoreboard was wrong, and the Colleyville coaching staff wanted to make sure they were all on the same page and they could tell their batter whether it's 2 1 or 3. I think that's because if it's 3 0, they wanted her taking, but 2 1, that's not the case. Pitch is low and inside. Now 3 1. One out. Tying run is at second base for the Panthers. The pitch from Maddie Ramsey. Swung on, line down the third base line, but foul. And the count goes full to Gracie Green. Green is a sophomore. Struck out looking in the first, flew out in the third. It's a high leverage situation, though. Three balls, two strikes, one out, two runners aboard. The pitch. High and outside to load the bases. Let's make it happen, ladies. Just the second free pass issued tonight by Maddie Ramsey. Against three strikeouts. But Karen Morrison will step in with the bases loaded. She swings, hits this past the shortstop into left center field. One run is in, two runs are in, and they'll hold the runner at third. That ties the ball game. A two-run stand-up double for Morrison on the first pitch of the at-bat. Wasted no time cashing in those chips. Just like that now, the Panthers threatening to take the lead for the first time. To the number six hitter, Nia Cisneros, also 0 for 2 tonight. She swings at the first pitch and fouls it out. Out of play. A 
A one pitch, low and inside. Catcher Beecraft comes up looking to throw. Keeping an eye on that runner over on third. It's Green on third, Morrison on second. And the hitter's Nia Cisneros. Two runs already in for the Panthers, just one out. The pitch. At the letters for called strike two. One, two pitch. Took something off it and misses outside. Still one away. Go ahead run on third for the Panthers. The pitch from Ramsey. Swung on, fouled off. Might have bounced off the foot of Cisneros there, but she seems to be okay. Two-two pitch again, swung on and missed. That's a big strikeout from Maddie Ramsey. Strikeout swinging, got Cisneros for the second time tonight. Four strikeouts on the evening for the Birdville hurler. And Alexis Perala steps in, 0 for 2, though she did reach on an error in the second. Swings, hits this down the third baseline, but foul. No balls, one strike. Two away, runners on second and third. Maddie Ramsey trying to work out of this jam. Keep the score tied at four apiece. 0-1. This is outside to Alexis Perales. Perales, a junior. Playing first base tonight. Also could play some catcher, according to the Panther roster. 1-1 one, one pitch from Ramsey. Perales swings, pops it up in the infield. Baker squeezes it for the third out, and the Panthers leave two on base, including the potential go-ahead run. Through four and a half, 4-4 four, four is the score, and the Hawks coming up to bat when we come back.
We have a new pitcher taking over in the circle for Colleyville Heritage. It's number 13, the sophomore, Lindsey McConnell, meaning the night is done for McKinley Swaim after four innings of work. Not in line for the loss or the win in terms of a pitching decision for Swaim. S struck out two and walked one. Gave up those four runs, but got the four runs of support as well. And we'll have to see how the Hawks are able to respond to a new pitcher from Colleyville. Doesn't look like any other defensive changes from the visitors. Bottom of the fifth inning. And this one could still go either way. It's the top of the order due up this inning for Birdville. Headington, Baca, and Burris. One, two, and three after that two-run fourth inning for Birdville. The Hawks now ready to begin their third trip through the batting order. First pitch runs in towards the hands, ball one called, as Headington has to dance out of the way. Swung on, fouled off to the right side. Headington doubled to lead off the Birdville first inning, came around to score in that first inning, and then flew out in the third. So she's one for two. One, one count, no outs, bottom of the fifth inning. Scores have come in pairs. As Headington fouls this off into the net. The scoring looks like this. For Birdville, it was two in the first and two in the fourth. For Colleyville Heritage, two in the third and two in the fifth. Four, four is our score. One, two pitch on the way. Just a bit inside. Much to the chagrin of the Colleyville fans who've been a little bit more vocal when calls haven't gone their way. I suppose some of that comes with the territory of being a district champion. You have an expectation that things go your way because, frankly, they have. Swung on, line towards left field. That gets down. And Bailey Headington has a leadoff single. She's two for three. Leadoff hitter getting aboard. It's just the second time that's happened in this game for the Hawks, and the first time it happened, they scored two runs. That was in the first inning with, guess who, Bailey Heddington. So Alex Baca steps in. The senior on senior night will be recognized following the game. How memorable will this game be for the Birdville senior class as Baca takes one high for ball one. New pitcher, Lindsey McConnell. Trying not to dig herself too big of a hole here this inning. What's already started to be something of a jam. Baca lays down a bunt, it rolls foul. Might have bounced off her foot while she was in the box. Doesn't matter. It's a foul ball either way. Bailey Headington over on first. As that leadoff hitter, you wonder if Birdville might try a steal, just a straight steal. Don't think they've even tried that on Cisneros behind the plate. Pitch is in there for a strike. Throw goes down to first, not in time, as going back safely is Headington. But you can see why uh, perhaps the Hawks are Hesitant to try to run on Cisneros. She, she's got a nice arm behind the plate. One ball, two strikes, no outs. Runner on first for the Hawks. The pitch. Just a bit inside. Similar spot to the last one.
trying to start a rally. Senior Alex Baca on a 2-2 count. Here's the pitch from McConnell. It's low. Healthy lead off of first from Headington. But she dances right back over, and the count goes full to the number two hitter, Alex Baca. Corinne Burris on deck for Birdville. Payoff pitch. Swung on, lifted towards short. That's a great backhanded catch. My goodness, by Perales. What can you say about that? Just tip your cap and move on. Leah Perales just kind of reached out and look what I found. Off the bat, that looked like it was from, it was not a particularly well hit ball from Alex Baca, but placement sometimes beats power. And uh, meanwhile, in making her way halfway towards second, then coming back, it looked like Bailey Headington lost a shoe or had to retie her shoe. And uh, at the same time, so did Leah Perales. I don't know why she's adjusting her shoes. Whatever she was doing with her shoes seemed to work on that play. I wouldn't change a thing about the way she defended that. An incredible back-to-home plate catch. Backhanded, reaching out. A potential rally killer. As it leaves Headington on first. Snap throw over to first. On the called strike to Corinne Burris. 0 oh 1 the count. Burris was a victim of really the, the placement versus power kind of thing. She had that screamer of a line drive in the third inning that bounced off the third baseman's glove, was picked up by the shortstop, and then thrown out at first. 0-1 pitches inside, count even at 1-1. One one. So the third baseman, Corinne Burris, is 0-2 tonight. No better time for a base hit than right now. Score tied in the bottom of the fifth inning. McConnell gets her sign, now delivers the 1-1. One, one. A little bit low, started to maybe think about possibly, maybe swinging. But Burris holds back, 2-1. and one. It's Bailey Headington on first. 2-1 pitch, swung on, hit back up the box. That's through into center field, station to station softball. Second single of the inning for the Hawks. Come on, Maddie. And now, uh, seven hits in the game for Birdville. First six coming against starting pitcher McKinley Swaim. Two this inning against Lindsey McConnell. And now Bailey Headington, the go-ahead run, stands on second base. Tell you what, leadoff hitters tonight have done their job. Headington two for three, and her counterpart, Danae Vasquez-Dixon, three for three. That's a combined five for six from your number one hitter in the batting order. Tells you, hey, maybe the coaches know what they're doing when they put the batting order together. First pitch, a mighty swing from Maddie Ramsey, and she couldn't catch up to it. It's just the high heat. Ramsey 0 for 1 with a walk in this game. The pitcher would love to help her own cause in a big way. 0-1 offering, swung on and missed again. Just can't catch up to it. And now she'll have to shorten up that swing. Those have been two uh, mighty cuts. One out. Runners on first and second for Birdville. 0-2 count to the cleanup hitter, Maddie Ramsey. McConnell would love to send her packing. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off, and we'll do it again. McConnell comes set, the 0-2. Swung on, hit in the air towards left field. That will be caught, 
and everybody has to go back to their bases. Ramsey gave that ball a good charge, but really hit right at Morrison in left field. She's been busy, and she's done her job well. Save for one uh, fielding error where it was a, a ball that bounced up on her, took a sort of an awkward hop, but she had to try to bare hand instead of grabbing it with the gloved hand. But Emma Beecraft has been seeing the ball really well tonight. The number five hitter, two for two with an RBI and a run scored tonight. Couple singles. Go ahead, run on second base. Beecraft takes one outside, ball one. one -oh pitch. Swung on, oh, sort of a golf swing. Ground ball hit to second, misplayed. Now runner trying to come home, and she's safe. Heads up, base running by Headington, and the Hawks are in front again. My goodness, what a play. And if that ends up being a deciding play in the game, just tough for Colleyville Heritage. Nothing to lose there from Headington scoring from second. Beecraft reaching on the error by the second baseman. Now the courtesy runner for Birdville will be number eight, Valeria Bridges. Sometimes all you need to do is put the ball in play. Emma Beecraft bringing the run home, 5-4 Birdville. Inning continues in the bottom of the fifth. Morgan Basildua, one for two in the game with a single and a run scored. Swings and misses that first offering from McConnell. It's the first time she's faced the new pitcher. Who's now in line for the loss through really no fault of her own. Pitched a pretty solid inning. That run ought to be considered unearned. Snap throw going back over to first, not in time. And the count goes to one and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. First and second base runners for Birdville. Number six hitter Morgan Basildua at the dish. Her next pitch she faces is fouled straight back. Connell steps off the rubber, then steps back on. Trying to get out of this inning with a 1-2 pitch. Swung on, lifted down the third baseline, but foul into the Birdville dugout. One in this inning for Birdville. Insurance run on second base. The pitch fouled off and we'll do it again. Still a one-two count to Morgan Basildua. McConnell's pitch, strike three called. Tough way to end the inning if you're Birdville, but you'll take the result. One run on a couple hits, one error, and two left on. Hawks are back in front as we finished five innings. 5-4 five, is the score. You're watching Birdville Softball on Vipe Live.
Cameron Songer back here with you on Vipe Live at Birdville High School, top of the sixth inning. Colleyville Heritage trailing 5-4. They'll send 8-9 and 1 to the plate this inning to face Maddie Ramsey. The starter still in the circle as the first pitch swung on and fouled straight back out of play. Panther Bats took a little while to get going. Held scoreless through the first two innings, but now two in the third and two in the fifth. They'll be looking for something here in the top of the sixth to erase what's a one-run deficit. Kenzie Dawson swinging again and fouling it straight back. The designated player one for two tonight. Singled in the fourth inning after striking out in the second. Ramsey's 0-2 pitch on the way. One hopped it to the catcher. One two pitch from Ramsey on its way. Just a bit outside. So Mackenzie Dawson battled back to make this a 2 2 count. For Birdville, you just don't want to get uh, these leadoff runners aboard, especially when you get ahead in the count 0 2. Now it's 3 2 as the pitch misses in the dirt and low. Swung on, fouled off to the left side. Count remains full to the leadoff hitter this inning. In three of the five innings thus far, Colleyville Heritage has gotten the leadoff hitter aboard, and in two of those three, they've scored two runs. The other two times, goose eggs on the board. Payoff pitch again. And again, a foul ball, a really good battle here. Mackenzie Dawson started out 0-2 in this count. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up. This ball lined towards short, one hop. The throw to first is in time. Nice play defensively by Headington. The throw to Baker in plenty of time. And a 6-3 to three ground out by Dawson gives way to the number nine hitter, Leah Somerville. Somerville 0 for 1 in this game with a walk. She's a freshman who's playing right field in tonight's game. Trying to set the table back for the top of the order. The dangerous Danae Vasquez Dixon waiting on deck. She's already three for three. Two runs scored and four total bases. So as Colleyville Heritage starts to you know look at things, okay, it's the sixth inning. This might be the last chance to get the top of the order up to the plate if things fizzle out here this inning. We want them to have a chance to be productive. And that's a nice first pitch swinging strike on Somerville. Ran one in on her hands, but she couldn't lay off it. That one might have slipped out of the hand of Maddie Rams. That was well high and sort of just floated towards the plate. Sort of shaking her hand a little bit. As if to say, yep, that slipped out of my hand. 1-1 one, one with one out. Base is empty. The pitch nibbles at the corner but misses. 2-1. and one. Now 
Maddie Ramsey in her sixth inning of work now. Looking at a 2-1 count to the number nine hitter. Taking her time. Gets her sign. Now comes and throws. Swung on, fouled off. For Birdville, two in the first, two in the fourth, one in the fifth. For Colleyville Heritage, two in the third and two in the fifth. 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on, hit down the third baseline, but foul. And the count remains at 2-2 two and two to Leah Somerville. Eight hits per team thus far through five innings of play. The difference is that one extra run the Hawks have been able to scratch across. 2-2 two -two pitch again, swung on and missed, strike three. First time Somerville has been retired. And the fifth strikeout of the game for pitcher Maddie Ramsey. But we go back to the top of the order for Colleyville Heritage. Talked about Danae Vasquez-Dixon has been the epitome of a leadoff hitter tonight. Two runs scored, two singles, and a double. Three for three as she steps back into the left-handed batter's box. Swings and hits this ball hard, but foul onto Hawk Avenue. Way out of play. I think that even hit the power line. It's shaking. We've seen a ball hit off the power line. We've seen a ball hit off the light tower. Seeing softballs all over the place. A very good game that we've gotten tonight. Oh, one pitch on the way from Ramsey. Swung on, lifted out to left field. That one has a chance, and an effort from Moore can't come up with it. And that looks a lot like her last double out to left field. That one, I think a tougher play for Moore. Uh, the first one, Moore maybe had a chance to get. That one, I don't think any left fielder's going to get unless they are starting on the warning track, which uh, a coach will tell you is probably not the best place to be standing most of the time. Four for four now for Vasquez Dixon. If she gets a chance to hit again, I'd, I'd think you'd just walk her. My goodness. Leah Perales now steps in. She squared up to bunt a couple times. First time she tried to, popped it up, and it ended up being a double play. She also has a single and a successful sack bunt. Hawks with that one run lead, but the Panthers have the tying run on second base. Ramsey's pitch, swung on, or taken. Throw goes down to third on the steal attempt. And it's a swiped bag for Danae Vasquez-Dixon. That was just a straight steal. I don't think the Hawks were ready for it. So the tying run now on third base. And that first pitch was called a strike to Perales. It's 0-1. Pitch, swung on, hit over the head of the shortstop. That will score the run into left field. Misplayed in left by Moore. And on to second is Leah Perales with an RBI single. And we're even at five. Panthers, they've been down time and time again. That's the third time they've tied the game. So Perales stands on second. Luna Flores digs in. Singled in, came around to score. Her last time up, she's two for three. Takes strike one there. Reach base all three times. Single, single, and fielder's choice sandwiched between them. Yeah, 
as he nods, throws, catches the outside corner to make it 0-2. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on second with one run already in in this tie game, top of the sixth inning. Ramsey trying to get her team back to bat again. She'll wind and throw. Swung on, popped up into shallow right field. That's going to drop, and that will score the run. RBI base knock for Luna Flores. And for the first time, the Panthers are in front as Perales scores from second on that bloop. <laughs> Couple balls hit to the outfield have caused problems for the Hawks. I don't know that either of those were catchable, but just the way they've been played and then thrown back in have given the aggressive Panther base running a chance to, to capitalize, and they have. Gracie Green at the plate now, 0 for 2, although she did walk last time up. Two runs in this inning for the Panthers. That ball tattooed down the third baseline, but foul almost beheaded her coach there. She's going to be running stadium steps for that one. I think most coaches would actually be pretty happy with, uh, with that kind of contact most of the time. Straighten that out, and that's extra bases. One ball, one strike. Pitch on its way from Ramsey. Off speed and high for ball two. Ball swung on and hit well, but foul into the parking lot by the looks of things. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on first with two runs already in this inning. Gracie Green, cleanup hitter at the plate. The pitch, swung on, line to third. That gets through into left field. And after the misplay and left, extra base for everybody involved. Gracie Green goes to second. On to third goes Flores. And the inning continues for Colleyville Heritage. You see just how important it is to Pick up a ball cleanly, get it into the infield on a on-target throw. And it's why you see in softball so much, even you know at higher levels, even major D1 uh, teams will really challenge teams to just do that correctly every time. You can get a lot of extra bases as the pop-up induced, squeezed by the second baseman and all that, ends with a Corinne Morrison pop-out. But two runs in the inning. Bunch of hits for the Panthers. They take a 6-5 lead as we're midway through the sixth inning. Time for the Hawks to bounce back and try to come back and make something happen here on senior night. They have two more cracks at it, trailing here 6-5 on Vipe Live.
All right, six five, Colleyville Heritage as we start the bottom of the sixth inning at Birdville. Cameron Songer here with you on Vipe Live. Shane Shalwinski, my QA. That was a two run rally for the Panthers that all came with two outs in that last half inning. Seven eight nine due up for the Hawks in their half of the sixth. They've scored in the last two innings, two in the fourth, one in the fifth, trying to keep it going in the sixth to at least tie this game. First pitch at the knees, called a strike to Sidney Taylor, who's over two tonight. The pitcher is Lindsey McConnell, who came on last inning in a tie game and promptly surrendered one run. This ball popped foul, straight back over the backstop and into the bleachers, where we almost had a nice catch by one of the fans. But at the very least, no one got hit, so. There'll be some good natured ribbing by the gentleman, for the gentleman who couldn't haul that in. And one of the dogs does not like the sound of the ball bouncing off the, uh, the bleachers. Or maybe he doesn't like the other dog. What was it? Probably about a half dozen. A lot of them look like puppies, too. Love that. We're bringing puppies to the game. Makes every game better. One ball, two strikes to Sydney Taylor, trying to reach base for the first time tonight. It's her first time facing Lindsey McConnell. One-two pitch. Strike three called. So one away, and it's the number eight hitter, Victoria Cano. Cano, who came on as a pinch hitter in the fourth, singled her first time up. Tips this one foul off the catcher for strike one. So she's one for one. As Birdville looks at this, you got the eight hitter at the plate, the number nine hitter on deck. Each of them already have a hit in their most recent at bat. And your leadoff hitter, Headington, is two for three. Ground ball down the third baseline, but foul. And it's quickly 0-2 on Victoria Cano. Panthers have the lead for the first time here in this sixth inning. They've either been trailing or tied this whole time. The visitors come in on a nine-game winning streak. Already clinched the district title. This ball hit hard towards short off the glove of the shortstop. The throw to first has to be quick, and it gets past the first baseman. Cano will stay put at first. Score that as a single. I don't think that throw was going to be in time either way, and it would have been a very tough play for the shortstop, Perales. So Victoria Cano, two for two with a pair of singles. Now the number nine hitter, Kaylee Anzalone. What can she do to keep the train moving and possibly get the Hawks back in front again? What a momentum swing it would be if the Hawks could take the lead into the seventh. First pitch in their half, called a strike. And this Anzalone's first time facing off against McConnell, but she's the last hitter to be facing the relief pitcher for Colleyville Heritage for the first time. First, this one blooped down towards second, the throw to second in time for one, and there's the double play. I don't know about that over at first. Six, four, three, double play as it stands. And it doesn't look like the coach is going to try to talk about it. So that will end the inning. And a tough way to end it. The one-out single by Cano erased. And we're through six complete innings at Birdville. 6-5 the score. Colleyville Heritage with a chance to add insurance runs here in the top of the seventh. We'll be right back on Vipe Live.
top of the seventh inning. It all comes down to this senior night for the Birdville Hawks. Last game of the season for this class of 2022. And for Colleyville Heritage, they'll be trying to get their win streak to 10 and head to the playoffs on a high note. First pitch swinging and fouled off by catcher Nia Cisneros. Over three in this game with a pair of strikeouts. Maddie Ramsey back in the circle for a seventh inning of work. She's going to try to go the distance with her team trailing 6-5. Her 0-1 pitch in the dirt, 1-1. One one. Hawks grabbed the early 2-0 lead. Panthers responded with two in the third. Hawks took a two-run lead again later in the fourth inning. Panthers promptly responded with two. Whoa, that ball crushed but foul. Cisneros was all over that for a very loud strike. So it was 2-2 two -two after three. 4-2 Birdville after four. Colleyville Heritage got two in the top of the fifth to tie it. Ball two. The Hawks got their most recent run in the bottom of the fifth to make it 5-4, but then the Panthers with a big two-out rally in the sixth inning to make it 6-5. This ball grounded foul. More good contact off the bat of the catcher, Nia Cisneros. 2-2 two -two as the number six hitter, Nia Cisneros, starts the final frame for the visitors. The number three ranked 5A team in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, according to the Dallas Morning News. Off-speed pitch, swung on and missed. Throw down to first to get her. And there's one away. It's the third time Cisneros has gone down swinging. Okay, Hawks. That's six strikeouts now for Ramsey. Doing a really nice job in the circle on the last game of the season. Alexis Perales, the first baseman, is the next hitter up for the Panthers. She's 0 for 3 in the game. So the junior will try to get one in the hit column. Swings and tattoos this ball past second base. And that's a double for the first baseman, Perales. Insurance run now on second base for the Panthers on a nice piece of hitting. Just went with it. Knocked it into the gap. And that seventh run could be huge. It's already a one-run lead. Hawks have shown they can get runs in twos. When every run that you're asking of them in the last inning is just really tough against such a good team. Designated player Mackenzie Dawson with a mighty swing and a foul ball. Good connection on it. Dawson one for three with a single. Seeing some productivity though from the bottom part of the order. That's been a key to, to the Panthers coming back and Making this a, a you know close game that they have ultimately taken the lead on. That one misses, called ball one. One out, one runner aboard, and it's a one-one count. Swung on, fouled off into the net. That last hit, by the way, the 13th of the game for the Panthers. Yeah. 
Ramsey's 1-2 offering. Swung on, looped into left field. They'll try to score the runner from second. The throw will be cut off. The throw to second not in time. It's an RBI base knock for Mackenzie Dawson. And the lead just doubled. From a one-run lead to a two-run lead to the guests from Colleyville Heritage. Looks like the Panthers are now making a change. Head coach Allison Conaway talking with our home plate umpire. We'll get a courtesy runner. Jaden Taylor comes on to run at second base. And we'll have a new hitter, Sophia Shannon. So, hitter coming on in the top of the seventh inning. Runner on second, poised to, to run, poised to steal. Let's see if she does. Gets halfway between the bases and then scampers back. Ball one was the call on the first pitch Sophia Shannon sees tonight. Oh, they called it a strike. They're putting a strike up on the scoreboard. I thought it was called a ball. One away. Ramsey trying to work out of a jam and keep the deficit as small as possible. That one was called a ball. Know that for certain. Watch the umpire the whole time. Pitch. Missing high again. Two balls, one strike the count to Sophia Shannon, getting her first at bat here in the seventh inning. Taylor, the runner on second. Swung on and missed from Shannon. Count to 2 2. And she's tapping her own head. Chased one out of the zone there. That's a pitch Ramsey wanted her to swing at. Leadoff hitter Janae Vasquez Dixon stands on deck. She's four for four, two doubles and two singles. Unless there's a weird double play here, she will get a fifth at bat. This ball grounded towards short. The throw goes to third and it's dropped. The throw rolls to the backstop. And that's just, that just hurts if you're the Hawks. That's an error on the exchange between short and third. Runner probably should have been going there between, <laughs> between second and third. There was no force play. And the ground ball hit to short. That's just asking to get thrown out at third, but instead the Hawks with a, a tough error there, still one out. Runners on second and third. The Panthers' best hitter coming to the plate, already up by two, and this has the potential to get away from Birdville. And let's see. Oh yeah, I was trying to see what they were what they were talking about doing there. Uh, intentional walk has been issued, and I, like I, I, you know, I wasn't joking about it earlier, and said, hey. Vasquez Dixon's got four hits, two of them for extra bases. Said that after her last double, you don't want to pitch to her. Meanwhile, the Panthers will go ahead and use a uh, courtesy runner for the runner on second, Leah Somerville. Actually, she will just flex back into the game for Sophia Shannon, who came in and had pinch hit. So it's Vasquez Dixon on first, Somerville on second, and Dawson on third. One run already in. 
or check that, the, the runner for Dawson is Jaden Taylor. One out, one run already in, base is loaded, and your number two hitter, Leah Perales, at the plate. She's got a pair of hits and a pair of runs scored as part of what has been a productive top half of the batting order for the Panthers. Has a chance to break this game open here. The pitch from Ramsey on the inner half for called strike. Really any ball put in play, you feel good about if you're the Panthers, just by the way the Hawks have kind of struggled to make, make plays defensively. There have been some tough plays. There have been some routine plays that they've missed. This ball lofted towards shallow right field. It's trouble, and that will drop. Runners are all going to be safe. Everybody moves up, and a run scores on the bloop single by Leah Perales. Make it eight now in the game for the Panthers. Sydney Taylor would have had to come in a long way to get that ball. Infield is in, two runs in this inning, still just one out. 8-5 advantage for Colleyville Heritage with Luna Flores at the plate. Flores swings, lines one past the first baseman. That scores one, airs two. And the throw goes over the catcher's head. Flores gets to second on some throwing adventures. Two more runs score, and the Panthers have opened this one up. It's now a 10-5 Panther advantage. Perales gets her way to third. Vasquez Dixon scored from second. Somerville easily trotted home from third. Four runs now across this inning. And we'll have the eighth hitter of the inning. Gracie Green will step in. Green, one for three with a walk and a single in this game. First pitch inside. First base is open for her. All right, ladies, let's calm down. Let's get it done. We'll have a stoppage here, and the whole infield will talk this over. See what's left in the tank here for Maddie Ramsey, who's fought valiantly in the circle tonight against a very good Panther team. Again, there's a reason they come in with just three losses, 24 and three, 12 and one in district. And now Coach John Love will join the meeting in the circle. Tell you what, if this ends up being the final score or, or something like this, you know, a, a, a margin of five or thereabout, not at all indicative of tonight's game. Man, it was close throughout. As we finished five innings, Birdville had a 5-4 lead, but six unanswered and counting for the Panthers has blown this one wide open. People will look at the, the score in tomorrow's paper and you know look at where these teams are in the standings and say, yeah, it sounds about right. But again, very misleading what the final score will end up being, uh, unless, of course, the Hawks can, can you know, put up a, a seven or eight spot in the, uh, in the bottom of this inning and win the game. Low and inside, 2-0 count now to Gracie Green. Check that 3-0 count. Here's the pitch. Swung on, popped up in foul territory, but no one's going to get to that. That might have been a little wind-aided. Off the bat, the way the shortstop broke on it, I think she thought she might have had a play on it, but that ended up almost up against the fence in foul territory. Mentioned it earlier, it's worth repeating. The wind is coming hard 
east to west. The American flag in straightaway center field has been tugging on the flagpole all night long. 3-1 count as Ramsey comes set and delivers the pitch. Swung on, pops straight up. And that will be squeezed for the second out. Good job by the first baseman, Victoria Cano. For the second out of the inning. Panthers have now batted around. This is the ninth hitter to come to the plate this inning, Corinne Morrison. Reminder, the senior night ceremonies follow tonight's game. We will uh, keep the stream up and running for that. Just to give you the full senior night experience here at Birdville. This one sort of off the end of the bat. Cano is there for it, and she has the third out. Nine hitters come to the plate. Four runs cross home plate for Colleyville Heritage in that inning. They leave two on. It's a tall task ahead of the Birdville Hawks in their final half inning of the 2022 season. They trail by five on Vipe Live. So here we go, bottom of the seventh, trailing 10-5, and the first pitch swinging, and into the bleachers. It's the top of the order for the Hawks, which is you know, the right way you want to start it. Your best hitters come to the plate, although they're going to need to really get through the lineup if they're going to come back in this one. Relief pitcher is Lindsey McConnell. Trying to finish out with three innings of work. All right, way to watch it. Come on, Bailey, let's get it started. One one pitch. Hit back up the middle, but too much air under it. And it's squeezed by the shortstop, Perales, for the first out. That drastically decreases your chances if you can't get the leadoff hitter aboard. So this is the last half inning of the last game of the season for Birdville. Their 2022 season won't continue into the playoffs. The Colleyville Heritage Panthers will be in the playoffs as the district champions with a bullet. They can finish the district campaign 13-1 and one if they can hold on to this lead, get to 25-3 and three overall. And here's senior Alex Baca in what will probably be her last at-bat of the season. She'll be recognized following the 
end of this game with the senior night ceremonies. And if she has some, something to say about it, the end of this game will be delayed for a little while. And she tries to spark a rally that could get her team back in this one. Swings and misses at that one, and it's one and one. A good pitch by Lindsay McConnell to get her to chase. Tell you what, this Colleyville Heritage team, you talk about senior night. Uh, this is a Panther team with no seniors on the roster they provided me. So they're the district champs. Now obviously, there will be realignment for next season. But if these teams share a district again, uh, Birdville's not going to be looking forward to playing Colleyville Heritage anytime soon. This is going to be a, a mighty team for a while. Baca digs back in, looking for her first hit of the night. She grounds one towards short, scooped up, throw to first, over the head of the first baseman. Really had to rifle that throw. She beats out the, she might have beaten out the throw anyway. Let's score it a single. As Baca's aboard in what will likely be her last at bat in a Birdville uniform. Corinne Burris steps in. One out, a runner on base. You know what they say about, you know, what does it take to eat an elephant? You know, one bite at a time. A five-run deficit against the top team in the district seems like an elephant, especially with just, you know, two outs to work with. As Burris takes low for ball one. So you want to see this Hawks team go down fighting. And battle every at bat, every pitch. That one low, 2 0. Burris singled her last time up. That was in the fifth inning. So she's one for three. Two zero offering. Off speed pitch, pulled the string on her. Two and one. Two one offering, low and outside. Pitcher Maddie Ramsey waits on deck, with Emma Beecraft and Morgan Basildua behind her, trying to keep the line going. Three one pitch lifted into shallow left field, and the left fielder comes on to make the catch. Baca has to stay put on first, and the Hawks are down to their final out this season. Ramsey 0 for 2 with the walk. She has come around to score on that walk in that first inning. We've seen her have some big cuts tonight. Let's see if she can turn one of those big swings into something exciting. Put it out in the outfield. Not on that pitch. It's low for ball one. Let's put this one over the fence. <laughs> Swings, lines this one towards second. Throw is to first, and that will do it. A final score not at all indicative of how close this game was. As the Hawks had the lead after five innings, but six unanswered for Colleyville Heritage to close this thing out. Ends it with a final score of Colleyville Heritage 10, Birdville 5. Recapping the scoring for you for the Panthers. They had two in the third, two in the fifth, two in the sixth, and four in the seventh. For the Hawks, two in the first, two in the fourth, one in the fifth, and that was it. As you look at the final line scores for both teams, do some quick math here.
for the Panthers. 10 runs on 16 hits. I called it five errors by them. Or check that, five errors on the Hawks. Let's start again. 10 runs on 16 hits. Two errors by the Panthers. For the Hawks, five runs on 10 hits and five errors. These teams uh, will now chat it out, embrace it mid uh, <laughs> on the field. For the Hawks, the season's over. For the Panthers, their season will continue into the postseason. We'll keep the video up for the senior night ceremonies. And then I will come back on and sign off. Uh, but I would like to show you the senior night ceremony. As you, you look at the, the camaraderie, the sportsmanship between these two teams. Uh, really something cool to see. These are, you know, rivals. They're not uh, far apart, just seven miles away. So these young ladies grew up playing with and against each other. And uh, seasons that went in opposite directions. Obviously, Birdville uh, missing the postseason and, and Colleyville Heritage. Uh, got to imagine has high expectations for their postseason. And uh, some of these Birdville players, got to imagine, will be rooting for their friends, uh, despite the fact that they're wearing the wrong jersey. Uh, we'll be back after the senior night ceremony to sign off. Uh, one more time, though, the final 10-5 here on Vipe Live. I uh, would like to thank my QA, Shane Shalwinski. I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you for watching Birdville Hawk Softball on Vipe Live. Stay tuned for the Senior Night Ceremony.
Thank you, and thank you for attending tonight's program. 